Recently, I had the pleasure of having a discussion about a book of Bangladeshi short stories with the editor, my sister Nya Zaman. The title of the book is The Demoness. It's the best Bangladeshi short stories, 1971 to 2020 years. The book was published in India by Alice um, and has received very favorable attention. I want to tell you a little bit about the journey that led to the, um, this, the publication of this particular book. My sister has had a very long uh, interest in short stories. And it goes back to the time that she published her first short story. It was actually a prize-winning story, it won a prize from a magazine called Asia Week. And the story was called The Dance. Since then, she's had a number of her own short stories published, some of them she's published herself. So the story, The Dance, was published in this collection called The Dance and Other Stories. Uh, she has other collections. Uh, the next collection is uh, Didi Ma's Necklace and Other Stories. The third collection of short stories is The Maiden's Club. And uh, remember that she has uh, bear in mind that she also has many other interests and has published books on many other different topics. Her, oh, her dissertation for a PhD was actually on Tennessee Williams, but she has so many other interests. She's written ch children's books, she's written novels, she's translated uh, Nazro, she's published books by um, many uh, Bangladeshi writers over the years. And apart from her own writing, I think what is commendable is that she has promoted the writing of, of others over a long period of time. So some of the collections that she has edited or published herself are collections of stories by other Bangladeshi writers. And in this case, it's specifically focusing on short stories. So she has a publication called From the Delta, uh, English fiction from Bangladesh. Uh, in fact, that particular collection also contains a story of mine. It's the only short story that I've ever published. So thank you, Niaz. Another collection of stories by Bangladeshi writers. Uh, not necessarily just short stories, I, I imagine. There's some poet, poetry as well. This is called Under the, Under the Krishna Tura. 50 years of Bangladeshi writing. A third collection of stories that she edited is uh, selected short stories from Bangladesh. Over the years, of course, she has looked at stories from her part of the world. And we have to remember that there were many traumatic events that that part of the world has gone through over the years. Um, of course, there was the involvement in, in World War II. Then there was famine. Uh, there was partition. So that was perhaps one of the most traumatic events that uh, people, not just in that part of the world, but all over South Asia, they've suffered tremendously. And uh, it remains in their collective memory, that trauma. So that is reflected in some of her collections. In particular, this one, The Escape and other stories of 1947. And if I'm not mistaken, the story, The Escape, was written by Sayyid Waliullah, um, whose book, uh, Tree Without Roots, was also published by her at one point. The other, of course, very traumatic event, and this was traumatic for all of us who were there at the time, and even those of us who were 
elsewhere like I was. And this uh, collection is called 1971 and After. He has been involved in other books dealing with 1971. It's very hard to avoid that topic. And um, a book that she was involved in was quite exceptional. The book is called Fault Lines. And what makes it remarkable is that she involves writers in different languages. This is something she did in her own prize-winning book, a Divided Legacy, where she talked about fiction in Bengali, in Urdu, and in English. So she did something similar here. She collaborated with, uh, with a gentleman in, in Pakistan, and uh, together they put together stories from 1971 reflecting the experiences of people uh, in different parts of the country. Uh, and also, of course, at that time, you had a, a country that was, uh, you know, separated by a thousand miles. Uh, there was East Pakistan and West Pakistan. So, but it affected people in both parts. And those experiences are reflected in, in, the, uh, in those stories. But also, she has another interesting book, and this is not fiction. It's uh, people writing about their experiences in 1971. And I think that's called Stories from the Edge, and it's a fairly recent publication. Now, I mentioned the many interests that she has. Um, over the years, you know, she's uh, been interested in uh, folk culture in and written books on Kanta embroidery, for example, on which she's made herself an expert. She's got a cookbook, which I love and highly recommend. But again, because we're talking about short stories and not surprisingly, one of her very big interests is uh, women's fiction. And uh, in this book, Arshilata, women's fiction from India and Bangladesh, that's what she focuses on. And uh, again, she has another book, Galpo, short stories by uh, women from Bangladesh. And I just bought myself another copy through Amazon. It was still available, but it might have been their last copy. And this is a very sad thing that we find it so difficult in Canada and North America to access some of these books. Um, as a matter of fact, by going to an Indian publisher, uh, my sister seems to have received a little more attention than is usual. And uh, I'm quite delighted that this has happened. It is not something that, will, that is lucrative in any way, but you know, we really want our voices from that part of the world to be heard and recognized and paid attention to. I live in Canada and I know what it's like. You know, if you're a Canadian writer, nobody reads you. There's some very fine writing that happens in this country. But unless somebody makes a movie in Hollywood where instead of you know, uh, having a Canadian setting, you'd have to change it to uh, Boston or something like that, as happened with uh, the wonderful story, Jest of God by Margaret Lawrence, which was made into a, a, a Oscar winning movie. I think Joanne Woodward in it, I may, be, I may be mistaken. No, sorry, it, it may, I may be wrong there, but it was called Rachel, Rachel. That was the title of the movie. But I'm digressing here. I just wanted to uh, point out that, uh, you know, it, it, is, uh, it is difficult for, for audiences in Bangladesh, um, for, for writers and authors and um, artists of any kind, uh, movie makers. In, uh, in our discussion, we talked about uh, a movie that I'd seen at, at a film festival in Toronto called Meg Balvar, and it's based on a book, on a story in, in this collection of films. And as I was reading it, and I was reading Kindle, because I wasn't going to spend goodness knows what, $90 or something to try and get the hardcover copy. And now the Kindle version is also 
not available for some reason on amazon.com. It seems to be available on amazon.ca, which is very strange. Um, but in that story, uh, the story is actually called The Raincoat. And as I read it the first time, it sounded familiar. When I read it again the second time, I said, surely it can't, it's too much of a coincidence. And then I checked back on my records. If I keep a record of all the films I see. I saw that, you know, I read the, I saw that the film was based on The Raincoat by, by uh, uh, Elias, I think is the name of the author. And it's an extraordinary story. It's a wonderful and I was impressed with the film, though it had some flaws, which is not surprising. And it was not that well received, but I was very impressed with some of the, uh, some aspects of that film. But what astonished me was hardly anybody had heard about it in Bangladesh. Even my sister had never heard of it. And it's there. Not only that, it's quite extraordinary that in 2021, this film was being shown at a film festival in Delhi. And, uh, you know, hopefully some of you get a chance to watch it. it. I think it is available. And now if you search hard enough on the internet, there's lots of things seem to be. However, I shall stop there. The interview, the rest of my interview with my sister is available on YouTube. If you search hard enough, you might find it. And of course, some of the things I've mentioned here will be repeated in that uh, wonderful interview that we had. It's actually quite long, it's about an hour and a half, but uh, it was such a delight. And I so much enjoyed talking about the stories and we read little excerpts. Um, and I'd really like to do an audio version of a book because it's just fantastic. And the two stories I just briefly mentioned the stories that we read. My, my sister read Tale of a Tulsi Plant by Sayyid Waliullah. What a magnificent story. That is one of the great works of world literature. And I'm sorry, so many of you will probably have never heard of it, but it is a magnificent story. She read that and she read so beautifully the story Radha will not cook again. What a beautiful story. This is an amazing book. Please get hold of it if you can. Um, if you can't get a hardcover version, I think it costs as much as $90 in Canada if I try to get it because the shipping costs more than the book. But you can get it very easily in, in, in Bangladesh from Rokumari, from Rokumari, sorry, I believe. And uh, you can get the Kindle version. And I know most of us are in our 70s. Um, I don't know who, who will be watching this, uh, but we've had to learn uh, to use the, the technology. I, I'm trying to use uh, Zoom here and uh, it's quite amazing. So, and Kindle is not that difficult. It's free to load, download. I read the whole book on Kindle and loved it. The other story, the story is told, the, the excerpts that I read were from The Raincoat, which I've, I've talked about briefly. A lovely little, very interesting, very sad story. So sad. And a story about 1971, as a matter of fact. So as I was, um, I digressed a little bit, but the, one of the reasons why I talked about the books that she's written is that it was a way of introducing some of the themes and ideas and points of focus in, in her uh, most recent collection. And the last little uh, excerpt that I read was um, a story by Saleha Chaudhry. And I think if I'm not mistaken, the title is 400 calories and a stop. And it's a brilliant satire, just brilliant. And I would really love to, as I said, if I ever could do an audio book, I would like to do it my sis with it with my sister. And I thought maybe she'd read stories by by women and I'd read the stories by men. But I want to read 
Saleha Chaudhary's story. I just loved it. I didn't like it the first time. I, I, I couldn't quite buy it. And then I said, look, it's a satire. It's not meant to be taken seriously. So there we are. And um, thank you for listening. All the best.